Spain's Football Federation has asked its president, Luis Rubiales, to resign after he kissed a player on the lips following the Women's World Cup final. The federation's call for him to step down comes after Spanish prosecutors opened an investigation into whether the kiss amounted to a sexual assault on the striker Jenny Omoso. Luis Rubiales has resisted calls to quit in a saga that's caused turmoil in Spain. From Madrid, Guy Hedgeco has the latest. The last week has been one of anger for many in Spain. This protest was against the man at the centre of the country's football crisis, Luis Rubiales. But the backlash against him also seems to have taken on a broader meaning. This is a very important moment, said this woman. It's difficult to capture behaviour like this on camera. I think it's important to raise a voice, all of the people that, is, uh, agree, that agree with the feminist movement and to fight this injustice that the, the girl and all of the women have suffered. This is the now infamous kiss that Mr Rubiales gave the player Jenny Hermoso after Spain's World Cup victory, and which she says was non-consensual. FIFA has provisionally suspended Mr Rubiales. Prosecutors are investigating him for possible sexual assault. And now, his own federation is calling on him to resign. Mr Rubiales' mother has locked herself in a church and begun a hunger strike against what she claimed was a witch hunt against her son. But for the left-wing government, he represents a mindset at odds with modern Spain. Spanish society is profoundly feminist. It is at the forefront of equal rights and an example on a global level, which is why these behaviours are so shocking. The Spanish government has asked this tribunal to open proceedings against Mr Rubiales in the hope that eventually he will be removed from office. The involvement of this court and the Spanish government reflects how this whole affair has now gone way beyond the limits of the football world. Whatever the future holds for Mr Rubiales, this crisis has already shaken Spanish society. Meanwhile, the country is trying to remind itself that this all began with a remarkable sporting triumph. Guy Hedgeco, BBC News, Madrid. Well, this latest development is a further escalation in a story that has really snowballed since the World Cup final. Our news reporter, Azadeh Mashiri, takes us through the timeline of events. So how did we get here? Well, after the World Cup final during the ceremony, Luis Rubiales put his hands on either side of Jenny Hermoso's face and kissed her. Later on, during a live stream, she said she didn't enjoy it. Now, after fierce backlash from other football players, media, as well as Spain's own prime minister, Rubiales finally apologizes. He says, I made a mistake, and adds, sorry for those who were offended. And yet that's not enough. On the 24th of August, world football's governing body, FIFA, opens disciplinary proceedings against him in order to examine his actions. On the 25th, the next day, Luis Rubiales says the kiss was consensual. This is what else he had to say. No voy a dimitir. I will not resign. No voy a dimitir. I will not resign. No voy a dimitir. I will not resign. And yet that same day, Spain's government decides to open legal proceedings in order to suspend him. And in addition, Spain's Secretary of Sport says he wants this to be Spanish football's Me Too movement. Now, the player in question, Jenny Hermoso, speaks out. She says at no time was his kiss ever consensual. And yet, the Spanish Football Federation doesn't take kindly to her words. They accuse her of lying and threaten legal action. And yet, she has a lot of support. Dozens of players, including all 23 players who attended the Women's World Cup, say they will not play for the women's team until Rubiales is removed. Now, the next day, FIFA announces it is provisionally suspending Rubiales pending the disciplinary proceedings against him. That same day, the head coach for the women's team criticizes him breaking with Rubiales, and that's as his entire coaching staff resigns in protests. The next day, the Spanish Football Federation announces an internal investigation is underway and that their sexual violence protocol has now been activated. That's what takes us to the latest developments, where Rubiales' own mother 
says she's on hunger strike inside a church in protest at the manhunt against him in her own words. And Spain's prosecutors say that a preliminary investigation is now underway in order to ascertain whether a crime of sexual assault has taken place. That's our news reporter, Azadeh Mashiri. Well, our correspondent, Guy Hedgeco, joins us now from Madrid. Guy, it seems like every 24 hours this, this story takes fresh and, and bizarre turns. Can he be forced to resign? Well, the Spanish government is uh, taking actions that it will hope uh, will lead to uh, the removal of Luis Rubiales uh, from his position. It has... Um, called on the, the National Sports Tribunal uh, to open proceedings against him. And in theory, that could eventually lead to his removal. But it's a process which I think may take longer than the government would like. So obviously, um, the alternative to that would be that Luis Rubiales himself simply steps down amid all the pressure. Um, there is, of course, also the... Um, the other dimension to this, which are the criminal proceedings being taken by the uh, the prosecutor um, in Spain, who's looking into possible sexual assault by Luis Rubiales. So there is so much pressure on him from so many different fronts. Um, it's hard to see him being able to continue um, as federation president. But we don't know uh, what his response is going to be to these latest developments. Um, we have to wait and see. Because it's extraordinary to say, but he, he has so far, as you say, even in the face of all that, that pressure, continued to cling on. Yes, he has. I mean, there was a tremendous surprise last Friday when he said, I'm not going to resign. And he repeated that over and over again. Um, going into that meeting, it had been widely reported that he was going to resign. Um, that was what everyone was expecting. I think things have really have changed now because since then we've had that FIFA's uh, had FIFA's uh, suspension of him provisionally. Um, that seems to have been a huge turning point because that really turned this into an international issue. Um, and then, of course, with yesterday's uh, developments with his own federation seeming to turn against him, that is absolutely crucial as well because the, the federation was really where he still seemed to have some support. Um, he, he did seem to have this sort of iron grip on the Federation. If his own regional heads turn against him, it's very hard to see where his support uh, remains. So um, I think you know, it looks as if he doesn't have anywhere to go now. He doesn't have much of a future. But of course, the, the decision to step down would be his if he's not actually forcibly removed. And what about, Guy, a response from the women's team, from Jenny Amoso, because they have had to come out day by day and, and respond to these developments. Will there be a point at which they decide to, to almost try and, and isolate themselves a little from this, if, if that were even possible? Well, yes, I mean, I think a lot, of, a lot of people feel this has been unfair on Jenny Hermoso, that she's been at the centre of this whole storm as much as Luis Rubiales has, uh, in a way, um, because she was a person he kissed. Um, it's her sort of testimony when she said she felt um, the victim of, of an, an attack uh, when he kissed her. Um, all of that put her at the center of this. Um, of course, she and her, her teammates are boycotting the national team. They're saying they were going to do that until um, Mr. Rubiales was replaced. Now, they seem to have sort of come out the victors in, in, in all of this, uh, this sort of power struggle, um, given that the Federation has turned against Mr. Rubiales, but he is still there. So the question is, will the players um, agree to start representing their country again now, given what has just happened, or are they going to hang on further and say, you know, we're, not, we're really not going to play for our country until uh, the, the president of the Federation is replaced that has to happen. So we don't know exactly how those, those players are going to respond. But I think at the moment, the, the momentum is very much in their favour and in the favour of all those who had been calling for the, re for the removal of Mr Rubiales. Thank you, Guy. That's our correspondent, Guy Hedgeco, live in Madrid.